so this part of the uh, presentation is actually uh, consists of a demonstration as well. Uh, in this case, actually, I have uh, utilized uh, uh, the normal distribution of WSO2 enterprise integrator and the capabilities uh, that the WSO2 integration cloud uh, delivers in general. Uh, so this is the uh, Europe con, and uh, when it comes to Europe, uh, trends are uh, always uh, something special. Uh, for this demonstration, actually, I uh, 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 took some kind of a hypothetical scenario uh, where some kind of sensors have been set up uh, along the railway in order to detect uh, events uh, related to trains. Uh, and uh, as you can see, uh, uh, the intention is uh, having a set of sensors uh, dumping some files uh, into some kind of a file location. Uh, it could be some FTP server or something, or otherwise, uh, yeah, uh, something similar to uh, uh, an FTP folder. So uh, we have uh, we are using WSO2 Enterprise Integrator, uh, the, the normal distribution, in order to read files uh, from these uh, locations, and uh, iterate records and upload these records uh, into the WSO2 Integration Cloud. So within the Integration Cloud, uh, what we try to do is uh, we try to persist these records in a database for uh, a business intelligence kind of uh, work. And uh, within this integration flow, we are actually trying to invoke uh, a few web services and ultimately do uh, a Twitter update for the uh, delayed trends uh, by apologizing uh, to the customers. Uh, so this is uh, the public integration cloud-based uh, setup. So there we deploy something called a data service in order to front uh, an existing MSS, uh, MySQL table uh, in the form of a web service, which means when you uh, expose one of your uh, existing data tables in the form of a web service, basically it generates the basic CRUD operations, or create, read, update, delete operations in the form of web services. These web services could either be SOAP-based web services, and um, also you can expose the same uh, service in the form of REST-based services. Uh, and uh, with the REST, actually, uh, you can even uh, select your preferred content type as well. Just have to pass the accept header uh, with the relevant content type, uh, mentioning either it should be XML or JSON. Uh, then uh, we introduce another part, uh, where, which is an API or composite API, which we have deployed on the uh, integrator. Uh, and uh, within that, first of all, we try to invoke the data services in order to uh, uh, save uh, whatever the records uh, that are coming in. Then within the same mediation flow, we are uh, invoking a microservice in order to check whether this train has been delayed or not. If uh, the train has been delayed, uh, we, um, we send a notification or we, we do a, a status update on uh, the Twitter channel of this train company. Uh, apologize into the customers mentioning uh, the delay. So in this scenario, uh, I am using a collection of a collection of records, uh, uploading uh, through this API. So all the data records should be persisted within the data uh, database ultimately. And uh, upon the check uh, uh, that uh, we perform in order to check whether this is this train has been delayed, some of the trains are delayed trains. So some of the records uh, will have uh, uh, records uh, re related to the delayed events. Uh, based on that, some of uh, the trains, uh, some uh, Twitter update will happen for the, for some of the trains uh, of this particular collection. So this is the cloud-based uh, setup. Uh, I will show you later how to uh, use WSO2 public integration cloud uh, simply in order to execute uh, these kind of uh, uh, capabilities. So the uh, composite API has been exposed in the form of a uh, uh, REST-based uh, uh, HTTP service. Uh, this is the basic mediation flow. So first of all, uh, when we invoke this particular API through the uh, local integration or the on-premise integra integration uh, uh, installation, uh, first of all, it has to acknowledge this message because uh, this has been developed uh, in the form of a one-way flow. So we, uh, since this is an HTTP 
uh, style of a uh, invocation, we have to submit some kind of an acknowledgement. So uh, we can use uh, the integrator, uh, integrator engine's capability in order to submit an acknowledgement. Then we are extracting values from the incoming payloads. And then uh, these values are uh, preserved within the mediation context in the form of variables. Uh, we use something called WSO2 uh, uh, property mediator in order to do that. Then we uh, clone this particular mediation flow into two channels, which means two uh, mediation flows. Within the first mediation flow, we are constructing uh, the payload required by the uh, data service that we have deployed on the integration cloud. And within the other flow, what we, what we are doing is uh, we invoke the delay checker uh, microservice in order to check uh, whether this train has been delayed. Uh, if the train has been delayed, uh, we uh, do a status update on Twitter. Otherwise, uh, the mediation flow uh, terminates. Uh, Uh, within the mediation flow that we would model on the integration cloud, uh, we are actually demonstrating these capabilities, which means payload construction. So if uh, your backend services require a specific format of a payload, you can construct that using something called WSO2 uh, payload factory mediator. And uh, within the same uh, mediation execution, we are uh, dividing the flows into two parallel channels uh, with the use of clone mediator. Uh, then we are uh, demonstrating the capabilities relevant to HTTP communication, uh, REST SOAP, and XML JSON styles. And uh, within the mediation flow, we are performing a conditional check in order to um, uh, check the response, rece uh, response returned by the delay checker service in order to perform the Twitter update. Uh, within the same flow, we are uh, demonstrating service chaining capability, which means, first of all, we invoke the microservice, then uh, we invoke the uh, Twitter API uh, using a connector. So uh, WSO2 integration platform consists uh, of a connector store where you can download uh, so many connectors for free. Uh, so uh, in this demonstration, we are using uh, Twitter connector. And uh, next part is the on-premise installation. Uh, so uh, we don't have a sensor set up here, so I will be uh, doing a manual uh, file copy uh, into a particular directory instead of uh, the sensor. Then uh, the on-premise inter enterprise integrator installations have to read these files and uh, extract records and iterate records and uh, invoke the API that we have hosted on the public integration cloud. So, uh, yeah, this is the mediation flow. First of all, we read uh, data in uh, CSV file format. So we iterate record. For each and every record, we extract values, build uh, the relevant API payload, and invoke the composite API, uh, which should ultimately update uh, the data service and invoke the uh, microservice and uh, do the uh, Twitter update. Within that, uh, we demonstrate the capabilities related to file transport. Uh, multiple records iteration uh, and uh, payload factory construction and uh, HTTP uh, based communication again. Uh, in this uh, second uh, point, uh, it has to be iterate mediator, so this is a mistake. Uh, yeah, we can quickly go to the demo now. No, that's the
yeah, this is Murphy's law in action. So any questions on the slide so far until we switch the demo? Like you can basically ask them now. I think uh, something happened. Okay. All right. Yeah. Great. Okay. Uh, so first of all, I will uh, show you how to develop this kind of a demonstration scenario uh, using WSO2 Developer Studio. Uh, because when it comes to um, uh, an on-premise or uh, cloud-based integration uh, logic deployment, what you have to do is, first of all, you need to uh, develop your integration artifacts and uh, extract them in the form of an, a special archive, then upload uh, these archives uh, into either the on-premise EI installation or to the integration cloud. For that, actually, uh, you can use WS2 Developer Studio uh, which is an Eclipse-based IDE, especially developed for WSO2-related uh, artifacts. There you can observe uh, there are uh, many sections, such as Enterprise Service Bus and uh, Data Services Server. So these are the project types. Uh, those are supported by WSO2 uh, servers. And for this demonstration, I have developed uh, a few projects. Uh, I think uh, it is somewhat invisible, but I will read uh, what are these projects. Yeah. So, so it's not visible on this screen there. So if you can just go through that, and if you can't see, if you want to see it, if you can come a bit front. Uh, if not, uh, so we will share the recording. As well. Yeah, we we can so share the recording. Show up on that screen. Yes. Share the project also, or just the we recording? Will, we can share the, the recording. We can share the project. Between yeah, it is on the GitHub, uh, so, so I can share it very easily. And uh, first of all, we have developed something uh, called WSO2 uh, EUCon uh, EI project, uh, which is the project that I have uh, deployed on the WSO2 integration cloud in order to uh, package all the integration artifacts. And there is another uh, integration artifact project called WSO2 EUCon 2017 on-premise project, which means uh, that is the uh, integration pro project that I had developed in order to package uh, the components which I deploy uh, on the on-premise uh, enterprise integ integration installation. And uh, there is a DS uh, uh, data services project uh, in order to package my data service, uh, which provides the uh, REST and SOAP facade in front of the existing MySQL table. And there are uh, uh, there is another uh, project called Tweet project, which consists uh, or which package the Twitter connector that I need to upload uh, to the integration cloud uh, in order to perform the tweet uh, tweet state status update. And there are two composite archive projects. So composite archive uh, project is something that you can package multiple types of. Uh, WSO projects uh, in the form of an archive, because uh, I need to upload um, 
uh, my integration project, data service project, and the Twitter connector project uh, uh, to uh, the integration cloud. So I am using uh, a composite archive application in order to package all of these uh, application types or project types within the same archive. And I can uh, quickly upload that uh, into the integration cloud. Uh, so these are the project types. Uh, for example, uh, of a development of this kind of uh, mediation flow, I will uh, show you uh, the mediation flow for one particular API. Uh, so I will expand uh, my EI project. Uh, even if this uh, project uh, directories are uh, smaller, you can see uh, the integration artifacts uh, with larger fonts when I expand them. So this is the API that I have deployed uh, on the WSO2 integration cloud, uh, which is called uh, the Railway Sensor Events API. Uh, you can see uh, there is a tool palette oh, uh, at the uh, left corner of this visual modeling editor. You can just drag and drop elements uh, from the tool palette into the visual modeling editor. And uh, you can select uh, these components and use the property panel in order to uh, modify the relevant values. Uh, and if you go to the source view, you can see uh, the relevant mediation logic is generated um, in XML. Uh, so uh, yeah, I think still the uh, font size is not very clear, but I will definitely share the project. And uh, uh, then you can observe uh, what these are. However, uh, you can even use the source code editor in order to uh, uh, develop your integration logic. And if, you, uh, 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 if I uh, expand one of these sequences, uh, which are some uh, re reusable segments of integration code, uh, you can see in, uh, inside those uh, sequences, we have uh, different segments of mediation flows. So this is the mediation flow relevant to the data service invocation. Uh, I have used something called the call mediator. And um, I, I am submitting something into an endpoint. So if we observe the endpoint, uh, it is nothing but uh, just a, a URL. Of, uh, uh, of the data service that I was uh, talking about. And uh, here, uh, within this particular sequence, I have something called the payload factory mediator, which is the mediator that I would use in order to construct the uh, payload uh, format that is requ required by the um, WSO2 data service that I have deployed. Uh, this is uh, something very similar to what you would do with uh, Java prepared statements, where you uh, construct SQL uh, queries by passing arguments. So this also has some placeholders uh, and uh, an argument section. Using this argument section, actually, you can uh, inject values into the payload format and ultimately get the relevant XML or JSON payload generated uh, as a brand new uh, payload. So first of all, we construct the payload, then uh, submit the payload into uh, the endpoint within this particular flow. Then within the other flow uh, of the clone, I have something called trigger actions sequence. Within this sequence, uh, you can see uh, there is another sequence called check delays sequence. Within, the, uh, within this sequence, what I am doing is uh, I am calling my microservice in order to check whether uh, this particular train uh, has reported a delay. And uh, if uh, this train has been delayed with this switch mediator, uh, actually I'm checking whether uh, this train has been delayed. And there are two flaws. Uh, if this train has been delayed, uh, it uh, calls the Twitter connector to uh, perform the uh, status update mentioning uh, uh, with the ap apology message, actually. Uh, in the other project, I have the file read uh, mechanism. For that, I am using uh, an artifact type called inbound endpoint, which would listen to a particular uh, file directory and fetch any uh, file that was dropped into uh, this directory. Uh, there we have two flows. Uh, first flow is the success sequence. If something goes wrong uh, while reading this file, uh, it automatically dumps into the false sequence where you can have your uh, error handling logic. 
And in the in sequence, uh, I have modeled uh, uh, how to read the file and how to iterate the records of the CSV file that I am reading. And within each iteration, uh, I am invoking my uh, uh, API hosted on the WSO2 integration cloud. So this is the project that I would be installing uh, at the on-premise uh, installation. Uh, so um, first of all, I will uh, show you uh, WSO2 integration cloud. You can uh, simply create an account uh, with the free trial version um, of WSO2 integration cloud. Once you log into the cloud, it will allow you to create uh, different types of applications. And uh, using this create application option, uh, you can create a new application. What you have to do is, uh, previously I mentioned something, uh, mentioned about something called a composite application archive project. Uh, you can package this uh, integration projects, data service project, and everything uh, uh, within the uh, composite archive uh, file. And you just have to upload the archive file uh, using this portal. Uh, to uh, you, you can upload these car files under different categories. Uh, first category is uh, WSO2 ESB. Uh, composite application, which means any integration logic can be deployed uh, if you created an uh, application using this type. And uh, in this case, I, I have uh, developed a microservice which I have uploaded uh, using this application type called uh, microservices. And I have uh, a data service. I, I, I am just uh, um, uploading the same car file into the data service and integration uh, uh, integration application type, uh, it will um, fetch the relevant artifacts and execute the uh, integ integration artifact and data service artifacts uh, differently. Uh, so these are the options that I have selected. I will walk you through the UI. Uh, so this is how we uh, upload the archive file. I can uh, use this local file option because uh, I have the archive uh, already uh, exported from the developer studio. Uh, you just have to provide a name, uh, and using this browse option, you can upload the car file. And you, uh, in the advanced settings section, you can uh, select many options, such as uh, the container specification, because in the uh, integration cloud, uh, it actually spins uh, different containers for your applications, uh, which are based on Docker. So you can provide some parameters specific to these containers. And uh, if you want to expose these uh, services in the form of HTTP and HTTPS, you can select, uh, deselect these options. Uh, yeah. So this is how I deployed my applications uh, using the upload option. And my applications were named uh, as WSO2 EU. Yeah, so these are the applications that I had deployed. Uh, first of all, I have uh, the microservice called the delay checker service. And I have the data service project uh, with this icon. And I have the integration project uh, uploaded as a different project type. So uh, if, I, uh, if I go into this uh, detail view of the data service, it provides you the relevant WSDL, which you can use with uh, some kind of a uh, tool or uh, application. So uh, this has been used here uh, with the SOAP UI. Uh, and this is the data database that I am working with. So if I select uh, records from this database uh, table, uh, records are not there. So I have used the same WSDL in order to create a SOAP UI project here. If I invoke this service uh, using this payload format, it should insert a record and return uh, the generated uh, row count. And now if I select uh, records now, you can see one record has been inserted. 
So the development of data services is pretty much straightforward. Uh, you can download an instance, uh, uh, the binary installation of WSO Enterprise Integrator and configure uh, the database as a data source. There you have uh, some kind of a UI-based wizard uh, which you can connect to your table uh, and just uh, generate all the CRUD operations in the form of uh, web services. Uh, after that, you can copy-paste actually uh, the source code into the uh, WSRO Developer Studio and uh, proceed with the uh, later development. And that is the first part of the demonstration, uh, which is the uh, data service. And uh, uh, my uh, microservice that I had deployed is called uh, uh, the delay checker service. Uh, it is just a uh, get uh, get uh, get based operation that I had to perform in order to uh, receive this kind of a uh, response in return. So this uh, returns the scheduled time. Uh, uh, this train has been delayed because uh, you can see at the end of the URL there are a few parameters, query parameters that I have to uh, use in order to invoke this particular service. So delayed by. Uh, uh, in the sense, uh, the minutes, uh, the number of minutes that uh, uh, that has been delayed. Uh, so this is the second uh, service uh, invoked within that particular mediation flow. And uh, now what I'm trying to do is, uh, I would use my on-premise installation in order to read a file uh, and uh, iterate records and invoke this uh, uh, composite API multiple times within the same uh, invocation flow. For that, uh, I have utilized a different uh, installation. Within this directory, you can see uh, there are uh, three uh, other directories called in, processed, and faulty directory. And I have a CSV file here. I will be copying this file into the in directory. Uh, so the local deployment of WS Enterprise Integrator will read this CSV file and uh, iterate all the records uh, and uh, invoke the API that I have hosted on the cloud. Uh, let me show you what this uh, uh, file contains. Uh, so you can see uh, there is a sensor ID and uh, an ID for the train and uh, the service time. Uh, so this is the time that the train has passed uh, that particular sensor post. And um, this is the speed uh, that has been reported. And uh, these are some other parameters, such as uh, outer elevation of the rail track and the curvature of that particular position. So the, the, uh, this contains five records. So when I... Uh, 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 when I copy this file into the in directory, it has to read, uh, the inter integrator has to read uh, these five records and invoke five times uh, the uh, cloud based uh, API. Okay. Uh, Uh, so for the time being, I will show you uh, my Twitter page that I have created for this demonstration, which is called WSO2 EU Trains. Uh, so you don't see any uh, tweet here for the time being. Let me copy this file into the uh, in directory. So let's check whether uh, the record count has been updated. Uh, Yes, it has uh, inserted five records. And uh, meanwhile, it will check, uh, uh, it will check whether uh, these trains have been delayed. And uh, based on that, it will perform the Twitter update. So you can see uh, two trains uh, are delayed. In that case, uh, this has posted uh, some message mentioning uh, we apologize for the delay uh, of train service, uh, the time, and uh, to uh, London to San Francisco. Uh, so uh, yeah, that is the total execution of the demo. Uh, if you have any questions uh, related to any of the activities that I performed during the demonstration, or if there is any uh, unclear areas that has to be clarified, 
Yes. How did you do the authentication with your local installation and In this case, actually, in these demonstrations, I haven't done anything. I have exposed everything uh, in the form of HTTP and both HTTPS. Uh, but uh, you, you can actually use something like WSO2 API Cloud in order to uh, get this done very easier. Otherwise, uh, you will have to implement some uh, authentication mechanism here. But if you expose the same uh, integration logic through the API Cloud, uh, you can enforce uh, authentication based on OAuth. And you can, uh, uh, you can issue a security token or access token in order to uh, uh, restrict the access to your APIs.